What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lotus Asakura, the one who never knows best. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you my top 10 beginner tips for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. The game is officially out, and I'm sure you're all very excited and very eager to hop in. But as somebody who had the Ultimate Edition and has had early access for the last three days, I figured I'd go ahead and drop a video like this that has uh, basically compiled a little bit of information and advice that I've gathered over the course of the last few days. Some of these might be no-brainers or common sense to you. Some of these might be things that you had no idea about, but I figured I'd go ahead and just make this list for people who are jumping into the game for the first time and wanted to get a little bit of a head start on their learning process. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Tip number one is pick the right control type. Now I will say that this does mostly come down to personal preference, but you might find that you play better or at least more comfortable with one control scheme over the other. When you start up Dragon Ball Sparking Zero for the very first time, it's going to ask you to pick which control type you'd like to play with. And there's two of them. There's standard and there's classic. And the game is going to recommend that you play on standard and I myself play on standard, but you might find that you actually prefer the classic controls. And if you're not familiar with what the difference is between the two, basically it's this. The classic controls is a lot more like playing a traditional Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game. So if you're somebody who's recently been playing a lot of Tenkaichi or you've been playing like some of those Tenkaichi mods, or you just have some muscle memory left over from playing the game back in the day, you might find that you actually prefer playing this way compared to the standard controls. However, if you're somebody like me who played a lot of Tenkaichi as a kid, but doesn't really have any muscle memory left from those days, or you haven't really played it at all recently, you might as well go ahead and play on standard because it can be a bit more convenient and there's no real serious competitive advantage to playing one over the other. But one thing I will say is that standard controls offers access to things like perception being one button compared to two. It's only circle when you play on standard, but you have to push triangle and circle when you play on the classic controls because the button layout is different. They have a dedicated button for it on standard. They don't have a dedicated button for it on classic. That's something that may or may not be a big deal to you, but just little things like that might make standard being slightly better, I guess. Uh, but who knows how much of a difference it really makes. At the end of the day, it's really up to you. Like I said, I recommend playing on standard unless you've recently been playing a lot of Budokai Tenkaichi. The game will also ask you which level of assist you'd like in the game. It's going to recommend that you play on semi-auto, which I did enable at first because I was like, okay, the game recommends it, so I'll do it. Uh, but that leads me into my next tip. Number two, do not actually take the game's recommendation on this one and do not use semi-automatic battle assist. Make a custom battle assist mode where you turn off every single one of the battle assists except for recovery assist. Recovery assist is basically going to enable your character to automatically recover after they've been knocked back or knocked down. And so far, I don't really see any downside or disadvantage to this. You can, of course, manually recover in the game, but this was the only one where I'm like, okay, this one is just fine. Outside of that, make sure you turn them all off, but especially guard assist. I don't want the game automatically pushing buttons for me. I don't want the game trying to automatically block for me. Maybe you do, and maybe you find these features helpful or useful and just help you enjoy the game more. Uh, but for me personally, I found that some of them held me back more than they helped me and kind of just got in the way. There's a mechanic in this game known as the Z counter, which is where you're vanishing behind your opponent. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen it and you might even be struggling mastering that technique. And my advice to you would be turn off the guard assist. When I started the game up, I used semi-automatic because that's what the game said that they recommend. And I was having a really, really hard time getting the timing on those Z counters. Once I turned this off, I got it immediately. It was so, so much easier. The only one I'm okay with leaving on is the recovery assist because I just haven't really seen any real downside to it. It'll just make it so that your character just recovers automatically whenever they've been knocked back or knocked down, but you don't have to do it yourself. And honestly, it's a bit weird in this game, or at least maybe on the standard controls, because like you have to hold R1 and like my fighting game instincts want me to like tech roll hitting square or X or something like that. You don't really do that in this game. It doesn't really matter. Like I, I adjusted and I could do it, but after, you know, experimenting a bit, recovery assist seems okay to leave on, but I personally wouldn't touch any of the others. Tip number three do the tutorial. I know this sounds like a no-brainer or like common sense, but the amount of people who haven't done the tutorial is honestly kind of funny. <laughs> do this tutorial. I promise it will teach you a little bit about how to actually play the game. And I don't mean like when you first start the game up, right? You, you pick your control type, your, your assist settings, everything like that. And then you do the little fight with Goku and Vegeta in the Rocky field. Yeah, no, that's not the real tutorial. Go to battle, go to super training, and then go to battle training. And there you'll find the game's actual tutorial that teaches you the ins and outs of the game. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a game that has a lot more depth than you might initially expect and a lot of different systems and mechanics that you might not get or understand right away and this will help you do that. And while it may not be the most convenient or the greatest tutorial ever, it will certainly teach you more about how the game functions and works and how to make use of some of these mechanics. Everything from defense to offense, movement and everything in between. There's several different tests for you to try out as well as explanations for a lot of the mechanics as well. I've already gone ahead and completed the entire thing myself and read everything that it has to offer and it immediately helped me a lot in the game. <laughs> Not to say that I'm not still struggling, but I'd be struggling even worse if it wasn't for this. So do the tutorial, eat your vegetables. I know it may not be something that you want to do, but it's something you should do. 
Tip number four is to go into training mode with your character of choice and then go through explanation of controls. Now, this might not seem like it's all that useful at first because it's like, okay, I've already done this tutorial. I looked at the controls. I know how the game works, but this is somewat like your move list. And it's not like a one to one move list kind of thing. But when you go in here, you'll be able to see things like for one, how to key charge, but also the skills and blast attacks and ultimate blast that your character has, as well as a small description about how they work or what they do, the amount of key that it takes, the input for it, and also the specific movement and everything that applies to them. Now, one of the things that I have personally found the most interesting so far is that if you hit L1 and R1, you get these different pages. And a lot of this is just generic stuff that applies to the game. However, the one that I found particularly helpful was the rush chain actions. Now, combos in this game might seem like every character does the exact same thing or like they all have the same inputs. And to some degree, there's some truth there. There's more depth, the better you get at the game and everything like that. But while every character might be able to do square, 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 or square, square, triangle, or square, 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 triangle, they seem simple at first, but not every character has the exact same effect when they do these moves. Some characters have a rush chain that's called rolling hammer where it spins your opponent around. Some characters don't. Some characters can do square, square triangle and that's the rolling hammer. A character like Tapion, like I play, he has to hit square four times before he does it. So it, it, that's one way that adds some depth and uniqueness to the combat of the game. It works a little differently from every character. Some characters have the charge key wave that they get. Um, and it really just all depends. The point is, I highly recommend going into the training mode and seeing which, which types of rush chain attacks your character has and how they really function. And honestly, so far, it feels like characters who can uh, do that rolling hammer and get you back turned, they, they might have a little bit of an edge. You know what I'm saying? Unless there's a universal way of doing it, I don't know. But if your character has access to that, you're already a little bit better off than others, in my opinion. Tip number five is to use sparking mode. Once you've acquired at least one skill gauge in this game, you can charge your key up to max and enter what's called sparking mode, where your character powers up quite a lot. It gives you access to a rush chain that's essentially infinite. Like you can't, your opponent won't just get hit forever. They will eventually fall out, but it's very, very strong. And this one feature alone, and there's other things to it as well, like being able to automatically deflect key blasts, uh, supers not taking away your key. Your key will slowly drain over time. And then once it reaches the end, you'll go back to your regular mode and you'll have max key. Uh, but certain skills that normally take key don't, except for your ultimate. You want to wait until you're at the very end of your key gauge typically to use your ultimate though, because once you do that, you'll immediately exit sparking mode. But this mode is also really helpful, not only online, but also offline as well, particularly in the story mode. I've seen a lot of people who have trouble fighting like grade eight Vegeta and everything like that. And he honestly, I think it only took me maybe three tries. The first one I was like, okay, how do you fight apes? Second try, I thought I had the strat and I didn't. And then the third try, I was like, okay, we're just gonna use sparking mode and it works like a charm. And you can just use that basically on any fight you're struggling with in story mode. And it makes things significantly easier. It's definitely the cheese, uh, but it doesn't just work on, on the bots. It also works online as well. Like it's, it's a very powerful tool that you should have in your arsenal and be using it uh, as much as you can. Tip number six is all about defense. Familiarize yourself with these three key defensive mechanics. And as well, I'll talk a little bit about Sonic Sway because I've gotten asked a lot in the Twitch chat about uh, how this mechanic works and how you actually use it. So the three key mechanics are perception, super counter, and Z counter. Perception is done by on standard controls, holding uh, circle, almost said square, and then triangle and circle on classic controls. This is a mechanic that can counter almost any attack in the game. Regular attacks like punches and kicks get countered. It doesn't beat key blasts. However, you can even counter charge attacks if you're willing to consume one skill gauge. And for two skill gauge, you can even counter supers. Now this doesn't work on ultimates, so be aware. And whether or not it's worthwhile spending that resource is up to you because you might want to save that for your actual skills. But perception is a very powerful technique. Be aware though, like I said, it loses the key blast and grabs. And it also doesn't work if your opponent is behind you. So there's definitely counterplay to it, even though this mechanic can be very strong. I've already seen that a lot of people online like to abuse this and use it quite a lot, but there's counterplay to it. So there is some risk involved with the reward, but if used properly, it can be very, very powerful. Uh, perception is also how you use the Sonic Sway mechanic. And basically Sonic Sway is that like super bob and weave that you've seen characters do. And that's done by just doing perception at the right time. If you time your perception instead of just holding it and you tap the button or buttons right as you're about to get hit, that's how you get the Sonic Sway. Then you have super counter, which is when you flick up on the stick and hit your attack button at the same time. For me, this has been the hardest mechanic to use because it feels like the timing for this is the tightest, but you can actually use this to break out of combos while you're being hit. This can even be done when you're back turned and getting comboed, but it's very, very difficult. The timing is super tight. Mashing it isn't really reliable or consistent. Like you really do have to time it. So it's easier said than done, but again, can also be pretty powerful. 
you have to time it just as you're getting hit in order for it to work. And then finally, there's Z counter, which is just tapping R1 to vanish behind your opponent as you're about to get hit. It consumes a little bit of key, but it's a negligible amount and it's something that can be used very frequently. It's particularly useful against opponents who just like to do those knockback attacks and they vanish behind you and just keep doing that over and over for part of their combo. Once you get knocked back, if you can master Z counter and teleport behind them, you can either one, force them to burn a lot of the key or turn the tide and get a combo right back on them. And off this knockback, you can do supers, you can follow it up with your own vanish, you can dash forward. You have several different options to follow up with, so it's very powerful and something you want to get accustomed with. Bear in mind, like I said, it does consume key. So if you're up against an opponent who also has a lot of key, it's going to come down to whoever messes up first or whoever runs out of key first. So like I said, familiarize yourself with these mechanics because you're going to be using them a lot. Tip number seven is to utilize sidesteps. Sidestepping is done in this game by moving left or right on the analog stick at the same time as you hit the dash button. And this is a powerful movement technique that I don't see enough other players using that's very effective against burst dash, rush supers, regular supers, and even dodging charge attacks mid-string. It's an underrated defensive mechanic that frankly doesn't cost any amount of resources and can give you an edge in battle, not only from a skill standpoint, but also from the fact that if your opponent whiffs a move, you can now counterattack. Basically, you can use this on pretty much anything, but I get the most use out of it by dodging when somebody does like a Z burst dash or when they go to do like a charge smash attack in the middle of their string while I'm blocking. You simply step to the side, you tend to end up behind them, and then you get to attack and take your turn. So it's something I highly recommend getting good at. Tip number eight, if you're struggling defensively, consider trying a different character. There are several characters in this game who have moves like an explosive wave or like the androids who have their barrier that act as basically escape moves that can get you out of a combo at the cost of two skill gauge. Now there are other examples of this that can cost more or less, well, maybe not less, but usually more. For example, Bardock has one that costs four skill gauge, but not only does it act as a defensive maneuver that gets the opponent off of you, it also immediately puts you in sparking mode. So it's very, very powerful at a pretty steep cost, but can be really useful and valuable, particularly close to the end of matches. If you're someone who finds yourself struggling to master the defensive mechanics in this game and you're just having a really hard time getting out of combos and you're just constantly in these long strings, consider playing a character who has an escape move. Number nine is to mix up your options. Once you've got your opponent blocking, you're going to want to try to do things more than just mashing square and hoping that they get hit by a rush chain, especially because if you do all five hits of the rush chain, it's pretty negative on block and your opponent's going to pretty easily be able to take their turn back or it'll start to get too predictable and they'll start countering you at the right time, whether that's with perception, uh, Z counters, super counters or anything like that. And obviously every option is going to have its own counterplay, but you might want to try mixing in a combination of doing charged attacks, stepping to the side. You can even vanish behind your opponent. And these are all things that the tutorial teaches you, like being able to do a charged sweep kick or in some cases even an overhead, because much to my surprise, this game has highs and lows, including a high and low block. Not to say that you're going to get high, low mixed on like a very regular basis. It's not really, you know, we're not playing Guilty Gear or Dragon Ball Fighters, but there's definitely a lot more to it than just mashing square on block and hoping that they eventually get hit or stop blocking. So I would definitely recommend exploring your options and testing things out. The 10th and final tip I have is to raise your player level. I'm sure everybody wants to know how to unlock all characters, unlock all costumes. How come I don't see Goku Black in my shop? Uh, and speaking of Goku Black in particular, you could hold off on getting him unless you just really, really want him right away. But we'll touch more on that in just a moment. But your player level is correlated to how you get all the characters. There are characters that you're going to have to buy from the shop and the way you get everything unlocked in the shop in order to even purchase them in the first place is by raising your player level. The max player level in the game is 20. Once you reach level 20, everything should be viable for you. Now on the topic of Goku Black specifically, I just want to mention that Goku Black and Zamasu, you can wish for them using the Super Dragon Balls, but it's actually cheaper to buy them from the shop because you could also get a million Zenny from Super Shenron. Uh, so if you're willing to be a little bit more patient, you could just wait till you have max player level, but if those are characters you want to play with right away, then I guess you could wish for them, but I just thought I would throw that out there. And I guess since we're on the topic of Shenron, uh, regular Shenron gives you 300,000 Zenny, so just keep that in mind. But speaking of Zenny, I also have a Zenny farming guide that covers a method I haven't seen anyone else talk about on YouTube or Twitch, where you can net 300,000 Zenny in about two minutes worth of gameplay, so it'll, that'll be linked as a card at the end of this video, and I highly recommend checking that out. But with that, that'll, those are my top 10 beginner tips for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and hopefully some of you guys out there found this video really helpful and really useful. I've been having a blast with Sparking Zero, and hopefully you guys have been as well, or if you're just now starting it, I hope you do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, so you can stay tuned for all the awesome content that I'm bringing you. And with all that being said, that's pretty much all I have for today, and remember, nothing can happen until you swing the bat. Later.